Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santinetti, and we're putting our face in the Torah still in Psalms 119. We have about, I believe, 41 days to go to finish this psalm. It's been an adventure, and I've learned so much just looking at the psalm and, and looking at uh, the words and the letters. It's just, just tremendous. And uh, today we're looking at Psalms 119 again, and we are looking at verse 135. Make your face shine on your servant, and teach me your precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me your precepts. Well, you know what's interesting is that every situation that we, we're in in life, we walk into things that sometimes we don't understand and we can't see. And you see, when God shines his face upon us, it's because he gives us light. And I want to say, first of all, and most of all, that this word right here, this is the face of God. It shows us who he is. God gives us the heavens and he shows us the heavens because it represents his face. His face is that which covers the entire earth. God looks at the earth and, and looking at the earth, he has given us scripture so that we can understand exactly what that means. Now the word face here is, is the word pena, all right? And what's interesting is that we find this uh, in many places in the Bible, but let's just look at pena. And there, there are at least four letters, sometimes three depending, but let's look at the, the three letters that represents the, the speaking to a man about grace, speaking to a man or person about grace. See, when God shows us his face, he is giving us the incentive that he wants to speak and he wants to show us as his, as his creation, humanity, that he gives us grace. Now, here is the, 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 the mouth, the, the fey that we're looking at. Then there is the nun, which represents man or fish. And then there is the hay, which we talked about yesterday, that breathes life and shows us the perception of God's uh, truth. And so Panay, or Panim, we look, and what's interesting is that this word is also found in other scriptures, but we're going to look at that in a minute. It talks about the presence. Now, you know, sometimes uh, we tell people, get out of my face. We're actually telling them to get out of our presence. But then the Bible says that David said, when you said to seek your face, your face, I will seek. So there's, again, there's an invitation. Someone said it well when they said that a personal invitation into God's presence demands a personal investigation of God's person. And so we have to understand that Moses, he was brought up to the mountain. He was drawn up to the mountain because he saw a light. And notice that there is a light in that mountain that he went up to, and there he saw God in a his presence on a bush burning, and the bush burned, but it was not consumed. And here he was right before the face of God, and God spoke to him concerning the purpose of his life and the mission to which God was going to send him. And understand that when we see God's face clearly in the scriptures, God not only teaches us his purpose, but he gives us light. And so here in his presence, we see the surface of what he wants us to do. But he wants us, watch this, not just the surface, because the Bible tells us that the Spirit of God was upon the face of the deep. The face of the deep. Well, that is the surface part. But then there's a deeper part that we must seek in his face. And so therefore, it represents the turning toward something. Turning to God. Turning away from the world. When we're in the face of the world, we're not in the face of God. When we're, when we're walking in darkness, we're not walking in light. And so the face of God represents his light. Now let's also look at some scripture that talks about that. In Genesis, we see in chapter 1, verse 3, one of my favorite scriptures when it comes to light because it is the first mention of light. And God said, let there be light after the Spirit was moving upon the face of the deep. Notice that there was darkness upon that deep because there was no light. Now, Jews will tell you, especially here, that darkness represents confusion, it represents chaos, and it represents something that is not in order. Now, I want to share something with you also about uh, what the Jews believe, the creation before 
the creation of Adam. Some believe that there was a world here uh, that was actually before we see the creation again uh, in chapter in chapter one, verse three. Let there be light. There was darkness. Now I I've, I've done a lot of study on it. I have to be honest, and I do believe that there was something us an order, a system that was before even the beginning of the creation of Adam. So I want to say something to you. Study to show yourself approved. There's a lot of verses of scripture that can prove that. And the Jews know it. I was speaking to a Jew one time that um, I had the pleasure of meeting and fellowshipping for a while. And I asked him a question. I said, was there a world before Adam? And he said, sure. And he went with the conversation. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because he, he answered so easily and he was just comfortable. And I said, there was a world before Adam? He said, sure, we know that. That's, that's, that's like ABCs, in other words, to him, the ABCs. And so I began to study more and more and realize that something took place. Even scientists will tell you today that the world, the world, and I'm getting to something with verse 3 of Genesis. I looked at the Hebrew letters and there are 23 Hebrew letters. Now, I, I could have mentioned how many letters are in each verse of 119, but it really would take a lot to explain it. And we're going to be doing that later on after we finish Psalm 16, 119. We're going to be talking about why God put a certain amount of letters in verses. Okay, so now with that, there's 23 letters. And it was interesting. I was speaking to uh, 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 a servant of God, and I was sharing with him about how the earth... Uh, it's not, it's, when we say it's round, but it's just a little bit tilt. And it says that, um, even scientists says that, that the earth is off, uh, is axle by 23 degrees. And the man said to me, you mean 23 inches? I said, no, 23 degrees. And when he looked, he took out his phone, of course, thank God for the internet. And he said, yeah, 23 degrees. I said, what happened to the earth that it's off its axis at 23 degrees? Well, you know, 23 in the Bible represents destruction, judgment. And so it is believed that the first order that was there in earth got destroyed. And so God, watch this, instantly brought an ice age, which destroyed as, as far as the surface of the world where nothing could live. And even men know about the ice age and they can't really explain it, but we know what happened. God judged that first order and he, had to, and he came back in Genesis where the spirit of the Lord was upon the face of the deep and he said, let there be light. In other words, God came to, re, to redo what was destroyed. But that's for you to study. I am, I'm a firm believer that something happened there, but that's for you. Some people say, no, that's nonsense. Well, look for yourself in the scriptures. It's in Isaiah, it's in Ezekiel. Jesus spoke about it. Moses spoke about it. So we're going to get later into that. But now it says, let there be light. And here the word light is or, like when you have an or around you. But it represents the face of God. It represents something that, that brings light and, and brightness and shows what is there. Now, it's interesting that this, this light right here represents the Messiah because there was no light in the beginning. The sun had not shined his light yet, and we went over this another video, but it represents Christ. He is the light of the world. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever walks with me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of eternal life. Here is in John chapter 8, verse 12. Read it for yourself. And so he says, I am the light of the world. Well, let's look at some other scripture that will give testimony to that. Okay. Um, well, you know what? We're going to get to that in a second because I'm still on face. And so here we see that it says that light came into the darkness. Okay. Uh, and then we see in Genesis chapter 2, verse 6, it says, But there went up from the earth a mist and water all the face of the ground. So the face of the ground, watch this, without water is cracked. It is dry. It is hard. But here we see the truth about what believers are in Christ. Because Christ has poured into us, watch this, his Holy Spirit. And out of that spirit comes amidst. That's why the Spirit of God manifests in the believer, because there is moisture there, and it, watch this, it brings moisture, it brings wetness to humanity. Humanity is dry. Sin is dry. Evil is dry. Wickedness is dry. It's hard. It's cracked. 
But those who believe in Christ receive the water of the washing of the word. And in, watch that, in that water there is life, there is moisture, and there is softness. And that's what the word of God is to us. It is life. It is water. And so it comes up, watch this, just like the midst came out of the midst of the earth, came water to water the face of the earth or the land. So the word of God comes up from us. As we read the word of God, the spirit begins to move and it, and it flows out of us. Jesus said, he that believes in me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Why? Because water is life. You take, you take water off the earth, there is no earth. Water is the blood of the earth. And so when we look at, at Psalms 119 again, it says, Make your face, your presence, to turn, to shine. And we just went through the word or. And so here, watch this now. It is, is, it is interesting because in the Hebrew, it is talking about to gather up something to shine, to bring something forth. And so there are times in our life that we say, God, I need you to show me where I am. I need you to show me the way that I should go. We know that the way to heaven is Christ, but there are times that we lose our way. If you're honest about it, if you're honest about it, there are times you don't, I don't know where, where I'm going right now, but watch this. We don't have to know where we're going so much as we do have to know who is taking us there. And God is taking us there. He brings us to a place and he gathers us together like a livestock that he might shine his light upon us. And so the word shine here in the Hebrew letters represents or, but it's three letters. It is the Aleph, the Vav, and it is the Resh. And it represents the name, the person, the presence of God that is connected to his headship, his leadership. So when God shines his light upon us, he is giving us strength in his name and he is connecting us to his guidance. Now, you know what's interesting is that the word shine is, is the prayer of this person. They say David or whoever it was, they were going through a hard time. We read before this that he says, deliver me from the oppression of man and I will keep your commandments. And so there was a dark place in that person's time when they said, Lord, I need you to turn me to you and you turn your face toward me because I want you to shine. And he says, upon your servant. You know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to read a few scriptures concerning the face of Christ and what happened. Uh, with actually one, but then there's a confirmation from Peter. He says in Matthew chapter 17, verse 1, after six days, Yeshua takes with him Peter and, and uh, James, or we say Jacob, and John, his brother, and brings them to a, a high mountain by themselves. Now he was transfigured, transfigured. As he prayed, he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light, the light. So notice again what happens here. For the first time, the disciples see Jesus as he truly is. And we're going to go back to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 3, where they saw the Messiah transformed right before their eyes. And right after this transformation, who appears? Moses, the law, and Elijah, the prophets. Notice that before the light, there is no Moses. There is no prophets. But after this manifestation of the transformation of Christ, the law and the prophets appeared. Why? Because the law and the prophets spoke about the coming of the Messiah and the kingdom that is yet to come because he is coming back and he is going to take us to a place where he has been and after all has been submerized, in the end, the earth is going to be uh, remade again. The Bible says the first earth in the heavens fled from his presence, his face, and God makes a new earth and here on this new earth, we will live and watch this. It says, they will not need the light of the sun or lamp because the Lord will be their light. In other words, in that city, the face of God will shine and there will be no more darkness. Hallelujah to that. I don't know about you, but I'm waiting for that. And now Peter also echoes this when he says that in Peter chapter, uh, 2 Peter 1, 18, he says, And we ourselves heard this voice come out of heaven 
when we were with him on the holy mountain. So Peter, again, is reiterating what happened on this mountain and he calls it the holy mountain. Why? Because of what transpired there. And what's interesting is while they were there, Peter got excited because it was the time of the Feast of the Tabernacles when people built tabernacles and they stood and they prayed and they sought the face of God. And Peter said, Lord, it's good to be here. Can, should we make, you know, tabernacles for one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and of course, one for themselves. And the Bible says that while he yet spoke, a cloud came and enveloped them and they heard a voice saying, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Listen thou to him. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that when the cloud went, went, went off of them, they saw no one else but Jesus. God consummated. He put, watch this. He put the, the meaning of the law and the prophets. He's standing right there personified. The Moses that was to come as the law and the prophet that was to come to speak to the people was standing right there. And what's interesting is that his face shone for that moment and they saw the Messiah. They saw what happened there and they gave testimony to it. And so they were happy. They were joyful. Now the Bible tells us this. It says, in this case, it tells us that the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the good news of the glory of the Messiah, who is the image of God. So the face of of God is the image of God and it is in his word right here this is the light of God the scriptures tell us that it is the light of God and therefore we can look into God's face for we do not proclaim ourselves but the Messiah Yeshua as Lord and ourselves as your slaves which we're going to get into a moment for, for Yeshua's sake for God who said let light shine out of darkness made his light shine in our hearts to give us the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus the Lord, in the face of Christ, in the face of the Messiah. So watch this. In the Old Testament, no one could see his face, not even Moses, and he longed to see it. He says, you're going to die if you see my face because no man can live. And he put Moses in the cleft of the rock. And he passed by, he saw his backside. But here in the New Testament, because of the death of Jesus Christ, we are face to face with the God of creation. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, that we come before, we can come before the throne of mercy to find grace and mercy in our time of need, because we have a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses, but he was without sin. He is the true light of the world. I want to go back to uh, John. I didn't, actually, I'm going to go to John chapter 1, verse 4. It says, in him was life, and the life was the light of man. We're talking about the logos. We're talking about the word that was with God from the beginning. He is the light. And what's interesting, in verse 9 of John chapter 1, it says, he was the true light who gives or enlightens every man or who gives light to every man coming into the world. Do you, you want to know something? When, when the seed goes into the woman, God has already sparked that life to be what it should be. And hallelujah. Listen, the face of God is in every person's eye, whether they realize it or not. Why do they keep seeing visions? Why do they have purpose? Why do they feel they have to do something? They have to do this. The only time that your face drops is when you're not walking in the presence of God. Ask Cain, who was going to kill his brother. He was jealous over the sacrifice that Abel was offering to God. And watch this. The Bible says that God had respect unto the offering of Abel. He looked upon it. His face came upon it. And watch this. Cain saw it. Cain, listen, Cain saw the presence of God upon the sacrifice of Abel, and he did not see God's face, his presence upon his sacrifice. And the Bible says his face dropped. He became sad. And God says, why are, why are you sad? Why is your face, your countenance dropped down? If you do good, won't you be accepted? Behold, sin is at your doorstep. 
It is crouching as an animal and is desiring to have you. And, we, and the Hebrew says, don't open the door. And he opened the door and he walked into the presence of evil and he committed murder by breaking the flesh of his brother and the blood, his dom, came out of his body and the fey, the mouth of the earth, opened his, his mouth to drink the blood of Abel and therefore judgment was in the earth. But thank God for the last Adam who, who while was, listen, while dying on the cross, his blood came down that cross and it came into, watch it, there was an earthquake and the blood went right through the right through the earth, bringing redemption. The earth opened up his mouth to drink the blood of the Messiah. Oh, you know what? You can just imagine what the earth said. It was bitter with the blood of Abel. But when he drank the blood of the Messiah, he said, Oh, I've been waiting for this drink for a long time. Hallelujah. Make your face to shine upon your servant. Well, what is a servant? The servant word is simple. It is a bed. And it means someone that serves God at the door. Someone who sees the need and serves. It is the eye of the house at the door. A real servant of God always has his eye or her eye on the church of Jesus Christ and what they can do for their community and people. That is what a servant is. And the word teach me. It's the word lament, which is the 12th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it represents the master teacher, the one that is above every other teacher, the one who is the shepherd. He said, Lord, shepherd me, show me, guide me, instruct me, and teach me the way that is right, because it is his statutes, which, uh, which talks about a prescribed way. It is a separation from all things unto God. It is, it is a person, watch this, that keeps the customs of God's word and not the custom of man. Well, you know what? There's so much more to look into this word here. Like I said, and let me just say this. This is interesting. And, and we're going to get more into this. I, I didn't want to do it for every verse. But here in this particular verse, there are 24 Hebrew letters. And we know that 24 represents spiritual authority and the church. For we know in heaven there were 24 elders that threw their Stephanos crown at the feet of Christ and worshipped him. And watch this. That represents the church because the Stephanos crown is only given to people, humans, that have served him. And those rewards that they get, they put them at the feet of Christ. Do your study and you see what I'm talking about. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spirit-filled day. And remember, Lord, shine your face upon us. Shine your face upon us that we might keep your precepts. Teach us, Lord. Amen.